could I have you introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm uh, Lance Cooper Jordan Cook, uh, born and raised in uh, Godfrey, Illinois. Uh, I'm part of 1-7 Bravo Company, 1st Platoon, 2nd Squad. Alright, and what current billet do you hold here? I am a team leader here. Okay, and how old are you? I'm 22 years old. Okay, and where'd you go to high school? Uh, I went to uh, Alton High. Alton High? Yeah. Alright, back in Illinois? Back in Illinois. Alright, so can you explain to me what Bravo Company 1-7 did the other day during the battalion assault course? Yeah, um, we all got on 53s. Uh, we flew around for a little bit, birds touched down, put in 360 security, and uh, we dropped our packs right then, and then we went on ahead and followed a Wadi system up to our objective. Uh, Tune order went 3-2-1, uh, and uh, my team, or my squad, and my tune ended up uh, holding security while third platoon went on ahead and uh, assaulted the uh, objective. And what was that like uh, during that initial assault, maneuvering through there? Uh, it was chaotic and uh, really tiring, running up on up and down the rocks and just running pretty much the whole time with all your gear on, just weighs you down. And what would you have to say about that? You know, like taking the most, I would say, the least, most least des desirable route to stay concealed. Uh, I tell you what, it sucked because me, I'm not that tall. I got to climb up on high rocks, and either way, you still got to climb up really high rocks, and uh, even one slip could really harm you and really hurt. So, what did you guys do after the initial assault on that first objective? Uh, after the initial assault, uh, we went on ahead and our we went up the side of the mountain and uh, we picked our uh, spots for our fighting holes and we went ahead and dug in. And so what, what did you guys have to do once you got there and started digging? Well, first we, uh, each squad would go ahead and uh, get a sector of the mountain and uh, the squad leader would go down the line and put each team leader in uh, a, uh, a designated hole or a spot for us to go ahead and dig in. And we'd go ahead and dig in, and then uh, pretty much just uh, look down our sectors and uh, wait for the counterattack. Yeah, what's that like being uh, confined to a fighting hole for a couple days? Yeah, it really sucks. <laughs> it really sucks. You got to stay awake, uh, trying to find the motivation to uh, even get up out of the hole and look down your your sights or your rifle through your sectors. What would you say some of the biggest challenges are of staying in a defensive position? I'd say just staying awake in general. It's really hard. You got to find the motivation, you got to find the will, and you got to try to find some way somehow to stay awake. It's, it's really hard sometimes. What do you do to stay awake? Uh, personally, I just bring out five hour energies. <laughs> but no, I, it's just the motivation of everybody's in the same thing. And they're all fighting to stay awake anyways. It just like gives me a burst of motivation to go ahead and stay awake. Or I just try to keep moving around. That's pretty much it. And what's that like, you know, being a fire team leader, having to set the example for your fire team to follow, even though even though you personally may be tired? Uh, it's really hard sometimes to go ahead and keep that motivation up. But once you realize, hey, you're keeping your motivation up for your team, because they're focused on you, they're going, they're looking at you for that motivation so they can motivate them to keep going. But in return, it, it just motivates me because I know I'm trying to motivate them and they get motivated so everybody's motivated. Can you explain to me what went, what happened uh, during the second night when you guys were in the defense, um, when it was nighttime and you guys had to repel that enemy assault? Well, we got intel that enemy were actually coming our way. And uh, so we all stood 100%, meaning we all stood behind our rifles and our fighting holes, waiting for the enemy to get within range of our rifles, which would be around 500 meters. So uh, uh, they came within range and we went on ahead and opened up on them. And what's that like having to constantly stay alert even throughout the night, even when normal people are sleeping? It just really sucks, but like I said before, it, you gotta find that motivation. And uh, once you have that motivation, your team sees it, they get motivated and that just motivates me. All right. So, that third the third day of the training exercise, um, that next morning when you had to conduct a counter attack, can you explain to me what uh, you did personally as a fire team leader and uh, your squad did during that? Uh, well, my squad personally, we went on ahead and uh, filled in our holes, and uh, we got in the order of movement, and uh, pretty much uh, went further out where the enemy was actually coming in, 
And uh, my squad personally, we were uh, online first and went ahead and assaulted uh, a makeshift trench that they had. And um, what's that like being the fire team leader, um, being the one to uh, you know, direct your fire team where to go, being that leader? Oh, it's a thrill, but it's also really exhausting sometimes too. Sometimes I lose my voice and I can't even scream. But no, it's a really good thrill. I mean, not just yelling and the screaming, but uh, actually knowing that I'm in, I'm, in, I'm, I'm in control of where each of these, uh, these Marines are firing and just knowing that I have that power, not to abuse it, but it's, it's good knowing. Right. Um, well, do you have anything else that you want to add about being in Bravo Company, being a fire team leader in general in 1-7? No, not really, except it's a really good time and I love it.